Hey, it's Joe Farrow, Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to talk about this laser right here. This is the X-Tool D1. We're going to talk about five things I thought were interesting about this laser. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the laser module itself. That is a 10-watt laser module. Now, if you look at the price, it seems a bit high. I think in this video, I'll explain why I think they priced it where they are. There is a lot of premium stuff about this. And the first thing is, a 10-watt laser module is a very unusual module. To do that, you've got to take... I'm going to share their diagram. They do a really good diagram here. You take two separate lasers and you combine them. Uh, the reason you do this is the most powerful diode laser I'm aware of that's available to the public is 7 watts. So you, to get 10 watts, you use two 5 watt lasers and you fire them in this manner where uh, they both end up being combined. So that's how you get to that 10 watts of power. And that gives you a lot faster cutting. Uh, you can get better depth off of more power like that. So, you know, that's one of the premium things about this laser this laser setup that I thought was really cool. Now, I want to switch over to, I'm going to talk about the next section, which is uh, the quality of this laser. It's, it's definitely a step up from anything else I've reviewed, not only in power, but just in build quality and everything. The box I got it in, uh, I thought actually was missing something. So I'm going to show you the unboxing here real quick. Okay, so I'm doing the unboxing, and normally uh, this doesn't interest me, but this is beautifully packaged. And I see an antenna or something off of here, which uh, I'm very curious about. Like, there's this little thing here. So I'll be very curious to find out what that is during this video. So you see there, like, the, the way it's even packaged was premium. I, like I said, I thought I was missing a box when I opened it, and it had everything. Not only the entire laser setup, but also it has the uh, Z-axis or the, the rotary setup. So let me show you a bit of, of what that layout looks like now. All right, so some just quick notes on the, uh, the unboxing here. The, everything about this experience has been premium. The uh, aluminum is a blue painted uh, aluminum. It's very, very beautiful. The, the, the manual came in like this, this envelope that looks really premium. Um, it came with stickers, which I thought was cute and fun uh, and also unusual. Like there's some personality to this product, which I like. Uh, I don't know what Peng Sheng is, so that'll be a mystery. We'll figure that out. Uh, the, the belts are included and in inside of here and it's actually run through this. So that's going to be a little bit easier for the assembly. I find that's, that's a lot nicer because you're not dealing with belt tensions, but it's not true for this leg here. So we'll see how that goes. It does have the roller. I mean, this is your, your rolling assembly for doing round objects and such, and that's all packaged separately as well. The laser is large. This is a much larger than the other lasers that we've dealt with. It has just a much, uh, it's got the safety glass on it, which I like. Just a lot larger than, than the other ones. Feels very burly. Uh, I can't, I mean, there's not, oh. It looks like there's a second laser there. That'll be interesting. I wonder if that's a targeting laser to help you know where you are, like a lower voltage laser. It looks like it's got a crosshair uh, pattern on it. So we'll have to check that out as well. So let's get to assembly. Okay, so here's the assembly of the laser. There was really not much to this. It was very straightforward. I think it took me about 30, 35 minutes. I did spend about 20 minutes going over the instructions, watching the YouTube videos just to make sure I had everything together. But the assembly and again, the premium quality of how this was put together, the fact that it came with the feet to lift it up over the uh, rotary, uh, there were so many things that were just felt really nice about this. The other thing was, you know, it had, I'm gonna show you just some B-roll of it cutting as I talk through this. It had this like little kickstand to set the distance, which I thought was really nice. So you don't have anything to worry about losing. The adjustment screws were very uh, easy to manage and didn't, uh, you know, move it up or down or anything. There was just a lot of, you know, the word premium just kept coming to mind as I used this. It was a very, very nice system. What you're seeing here is actual speed for an engraving, just to give you an idea of how fast the machine moves during operation. I want to talk about one of the drawbacks of this machine. At this price point, you would expect a machine to have end stops, and this one does not have them. The end stops I've talked about in other videos, and basically it allows for repeatability, which is really useful if you're going to cut like five or six of something out. It really allows you to know where you are in the XY coordinate on the space. The nice thing about this is it does have a targeting laser, so it does help you, and it also has framing features 
to place your image that you're going to cut uh, or engrave on your stock but it does not have that feature and I hadn't seen other videos that mention that so I wanted you to know about that all right now let's go talk about the software and get into that there we go and I want to show how easy the software is to use and also mention how you know unique it is to have software that comes with a laser a lot of lasers, they come and they have a Gerbil firmware. And what that means is you have to download software to run with that laser. And there's typically two main softwares out there. There's Laser Gerbil, which is mainly to control a laser. And you have to do all of your design work outside of it. Or there is other software called uh, Lightburn, where you can actually do the layout and design. Lightburn costs $60 for a personal license. And then it's each year to get updates, you have to pay another $60. So I want to stress that, that, you know, when you start thinking again about the price and you think about the price of this, this is an all-in-one package. It has design software in it. I'm going to run you through it real quick. It's called Laser Box Basic here. It's very, very simple to use. And because it's designed by them, you're likely going to have better support if you have a problem with the software or the laser. It all works together as an ecosystem. So here you go with the drop down. You've got the network. You can connect to the network or you can add the device if it's local. Now, I do wanna say I have had crashes with LaserBox ba Basic. You know, it's it's great that they create the software, but they there's definitely some work to be done here. That being said, it's, uh, it's fairly easy to use to get started. You've got your basic pen here. The pen, you can do multiple points and then connect them. And now you've got a shape that you can very easily move around. Very simple there. Uh, you've got some, you know, your measurements on the side here so you can actually you know find out like where you're placing it on your grid and you can scale and so on now you've also got insert for all your basics line rectangle and so on the most important one here is text i find text is going to be where you're going to probably do things uh you know the most things if you're personalizing stu stuff um if i hold down shift when i resize the text it will lock it and scale it without warping it like <laughs> like i've already done actually um, and this makes it nice to just place onto something. This right here is the engraved setting. If, uh, if I click over to cut, you'll see that anything that's a cut is in purple. And the power and speed is adjustable for each. You've also got materials here. So if you go down to basswood, it's got some presets for uh, cutting and so on. Uh, see, if I go to leather, you can see that it's going to up the speed quite a bit for leather and lower the power a bit. So it's kind of nice to have some pre-built materials in there. And also, you know, you've got your thicknesses of what you'd want. The uh, plus sign here when it is connected to a laser, which mine is not right now, it, it will allow you to do framing and jogging. I can show that in a video in a second. <clears throat> the other thing about this is like, okay, well, you know, that's, that's great for creating from scratch. What if I have a design I want to bring in? So I'm going to bring in a design. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so here is a clock. Okay, so you can see what the clock should look like when it's done, and you'll see it, it looks very different when we switch over to the software here. So when I take, I'm going to take a SVG file and just drag it onto the software. Um, this ironically is sometimes where it crashes. Okay, cool. So current size exceeds the canvas. Do you want to scale it? I'll say yes. And then I can uh, hold shift and scale it appropriately. And I can see right off the bat how many uh, millimeters it is. I'm going to go to about 300 millimeters. And there you go. So that would be my outline of my clock. That's currently an engrave. I'll click cut. And now that's a cut. Now, uh, the thing is, for, for cutting this right here, you're not going to be able to cut it with one pass. So I would need four passes. I simply update this number here. What happened here? There we go, four passes. And then I can lower the speed or do things as needed for, for um, basically controlling the cuts. So again, software, very easy to use. It's built in, it's very visual. You know, I can see exactly where I'm gonna cut. I can, uh, if I wanna engrave something on top of here, I can. One thing I probably wanna do, that, since this is a clock, is I probably wanna insert a circle right, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna hold control. And now I've got a circle and I can center that up a little bit. And that would be, uh, oh, that's, that's an engrave right now. We'll click it, select cut, and we'll up the, there we go. 
And now my clockworks basically would go into the middle there. The other thing I want to talk about is cutting tips. And these were things that we learned. This is probably true of almost any laser, but if you have an X-Tool D1, you're thinking about getting it, you will have a lot better success if you follow these tips really quickly. One of them is elevate what you're cutting. Lift it up off of the sheet that it's on. Um, you can use Legos, you can use anything that will get it up in the air. You know, make sure you don't hit the Legos with the laser, but, but something that's consistent to lift it up. Now when you lift it and you're doing this cut, you're gonna want this outer cut here. You're probably gonna want to uh, maybe cut it away, like delete it and then do this cut here. Then paste this back and delete all these so that you can do the outer ring cut. And the reason you'd want to do that is we, once you cut this outer circle, the entire piece will fall. So if you don't cut that yet, all of these little pieces will fall and you can know that you got through whatever you're cutting. Uh, the other thing about elevating the cut is it gives airflow underneath. It's very similar to a honeycomb board. It's a cheap way to do it. If you want to spend some money, they do have a honeycomb board on their website uh, for, for sale. And you can get the official X-Tool uh, board. That looks like this here. This is what a honeycomb sheet looks like. And what it comes with, what it is, is you take the sheet here and you place it on this metal sheet. And the laser goes through the honeycomb and hits the metal. That allows you to have, whoop allows you to have airflow underneath, um, but also allows you a place to, to like clamp down your work onto this right here. You can see they're a bit spendy, um, but if you're going, you know, if you're going at this level of a laser, you're kind of going pro anyway. So that may not be the worst thing to do. Um, speaking of pro real quick, since I'm on the website, there is the X-Tool D1 Pro. I'm not reviewing it in this, but I just wanted to show you that they are on pre-order and there's something coming. So you may be able to get the X tools uh, for much less expensive. Look for sales. They are always coming on and off sale. They were on a great sale for St. Patrick's Day. And I apologize for not getting this video out sooner. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to cover here? So, um, safety glasses is the other cutting tip. Now, I always talk about safety glasses. You're probably going to want to get your own. But the big deal here is when you lift the cut up, you're going to have some exposed laser that goes through uh, when it's going through the cutting that that you is no longer inside of their shield. So let's remind you that the shield of the laser here is it looks like this right here. Um, so this orange piece at the bottom of the laser. If you lift the laser up so that it's cutting through, the laser will be unexposed. So make sure you have safety glasses on when you're well, you should always have safety glasses on. But when you're cutting, the thing I found out is I was at the end of the garage and had turned and caught a glimpse of it and it was enough to, to uh, not feel very good. And these things can instantly blind you. So make sure you have your safety glasses on, especially make sure you have them or anyone else that walks by the laser if it's lifted up in a cutting mode. Seeing if they have the, the kicks. Ah, there it is. The kickstand is right there. It flips down and that's how you space it. Again, really slick design to have it built in. Once it's spaced, you just flip it up out of the way and it's gone. There is no air assist on this laser. I don't know if there's one available. I'll have to ask X-Tool. Um, but outside of that, my success with it has been really, really high. I'm very excited about uh, using it some more and I will be making more videos, especially the rotary. Uh, fortunately, it's at uh, my friend's house, Vince's uh, tech shop, which I'll put his channel below. If you like my content, you'll love his content. It does very similar stuff where we do maker projects, and it's in his garage. So we're going to go and work on that, but I will show you the Star Wars clock in the next video, and I'll talk about how I use the software and how I built it. But that will also be more generic and talk not, I mean, it, it was made on the X-Tool, and it will talk about X-Tool, but also if you're ever making one of those... Um, uh, clocks like this, there's a lot to know about safety and uh, techniques and where do you get your clockworks and, and design and stuff like that. And I realized that would be a great, excellent next video. So we'll do that in the next one. For now, I want to thank you for watching. I'm Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit. I want to thank X-Tool for sending this laser out for me to play with. Um, I, like I said, have a lot of plans of projects to do with it and videos to do with it. Uh, just need to get time to film them all. So this is the start of that series. Thanks a lot. I'll talk to you soon.